Hi guys, how are you? So nice to connect to you. My name is Laura. This is Pleiadian Healer from PleiadianHealer.com and welcome to my channel. Welcome to this video. So I don't even know how to start. I have a lot of notes around me here. So I'm just going to start reading from those. We have a lot of topics to go through. And this is just random insight. I even got sticky notes and everything all over here. Uh, random insight that's been coming through since October and on, I would say. So I don't know when I'm going to air this, but uh, I've been wanting to make videos on this for quite some time already. And so there are a few topics like the cross and then the Vatican and the soul trap it's enforcing, the clones and the purpose, Avalon, the covenant arc, um what's that thing the knights were guarding forgot the templar um what were the temp the holy grail right that one uh inner earth and uh the adam and eve story bible gods ai gods all of that so i don't know how many videos we're going to have on this but we're just going to start somewhere and we're going to start with the watchers so who are the watchers? Once again, this is like a random insight video, trying to combine a few things together. Okay, so who, who are the watchers? The watchers exist. I saw my own watchers, finally. I knew they existed. I knew I was being watched. I think we all know. If we have that feeling, we know we're being watched. We probably are being watched. I'm not talking about random robotoids or people who don't matter, but if you are a soul, what is a soul? you know, one of those few people, like less than 30% of people right now on earth who are extremely targeted, who are able to wake people up, who are partially under hypnosis. The other part is waking up and then there's still a part that is almost completely awake, but we're all pretty kept down. Let's put it that way. Um, we're not soulless. We're not clones. We don't have the empty eye stare. Unlike a lot of these new agers that are currently being dissected on my channel. Um, we're not here to mislead and uh, we have a ripple effect on people. So that kind of qualifies as a soul. There are a few other things out there, but you know, it might be worth another video because I had a video on my old channel that was all about how can you recognize clones and robotoids? And I wanna have a new video on this channel, just an updated version of it in regards to how you can tell when someone has empty eyes, soulless eyes, so I'm not talking just about the celebrities or people you see on YouTube, but just also your neighbors, you know, or people you're in touch with, or even relatives. And so it is so eerie every single time, you know, I always like to use that one story of a subway, like back in 2018, before I even knew about these concepts, I was literally walking into this overcrowded subway here in New York City. It was rush hour for people who are from here, meaning there's obviously a lot of people in the subway in the train and i remember entering this car this train car is what we call it here and there were a lot of people in it but the moment i entered it it felt empty <laughs> literally felt like there was no one in there like it just felt hollow empty like there was no depth to these people and that's how i like to equate my first awakening towards these soulless people, even though it would take a few years down the line and many other revelations to really pinpoint why were they soulless? Why are we surrounded by the soulless, by these background characters? But that's really the first moment in my life, aside from a few other moments back in 2018, where I realized something's wrong here. Like, why does this overcrowded, filled with people train car feel empty to me? And the reason it is, is because there are obviously a whole bunch of background characters here in this city, um, not just this city, but most likely wherever you live there too, on the streets, in a car, uh, on public transport, wherever. I know when I go to Latin America, I see it always so clearly because they even look alike, you know, like when there's not a whole lot of variety in ethnicity, the same in Asia too. Uh, you see it more clearly, but especially here when you're in Caucasian or a Western, a Westernized country, you have a bit more of that, you know, you have like, oh, there's this African American, there's this white Irish, there's this uh, Asian American, you know, so you do have a lot of variety, whereas when you go to these countries where you don't yet have that type of variety, it's easier to tell, for me at least, but in a city like New York, 
uh, you definitely have a lot of that too, because whenever I'm around in this city and I have been here for a moment, obviously, but it's always so funny to me how sometimes on opposite ends of the city, our paths kind of intersect. Like my one friend would be all the way from somewhere up here. I'm from down here. And we just kind of, our paths intersect on the same day without even knowing we were in the same area. And I'm like, that's how I know the city is much smaller than they want us to believe and that, that there aren't actually that many souls here in this city. It is for sure the same about LA. LA is actor, theater, film, not theater so much, that's more here in New York, but, but film paradise. So the reason you would have a lot of clone bodies and like soulless beings in LA is simply because they need all those background characters for their films and uh, a lot of other cities too. Anyhow, that's just a short something. So if you are a soul and even if you're a soulless being, you're probably gonna be watched somehow. It's not just through your screen. It's not just through the, the apps you have on your phone and they monitoring through that. And they're also taking screenshots of the camera, which is why I always have something on my camera, the selfie camera and that camera. Uh, I call it masking tape. But basically, um, they're, taking, they're taking these screenshots, you know? So you wanna be aware of that. They can actually take screenshots of your faces when you're just looking at Facebook or all these other apps. Does the camera help? In my opinion, yes. Um, so the camera helps for the AI programs they already have in place. Okay, all the surveillance programs, everything. If you have a Siri, if you have an Alexa or something like that in your apartment, which they've been really pushing for that for the past 10 plus years, obviously, if not even longer, or those like house robots that help you vacuum your place. That is a method of surveillance similar to cameras you put up in your place. You know, if people have pets, they put up pet cameras. If you just have a regular surveillance camera, all of that is going to be hijacked. Even like a, a smart doorbell, which I ran into that two years ago when a friend of mine had that in her place, even that they can tap into your voice, everything. Not being paranoid here. It is just what it is. It's not called bugging someone for no reason. You know, they're literally tapping into you. They're bugging you. Like bugs used to be what the FBI and CIA used when they were literally having to put something into people's homes when the people were outside of their home so that they could you know, or put it in their phone lines or whatever. They don't have to do that anymore because you're already giving so much information away with your smartphone. Someone commented recently being like, they want to revert back to a flip phone. I know people who've done that. It seems to be a trend, especially among teenagers these days. It might not be a bad idea. Um, a lot of business is done over the phone. So it really depends on the lifestyle you lead. But yeah, it could be, for some people, it could be an option. I agree. Um, anyhow. So the watchers, what they look like in my case, I'm just reading from my notes here. So I call them the astral watchers. One had a blue green eye. So it has like these eyes that seem blue or green. The other one, so it seemed like this one was like blondish with blue green eyes. And it was like a flashlight trying to shine through into my brain almost. So they're trying to scan through my brain and grab like these thoughts or thought patterns somehow, especially in our vulnerable state. What's our vulnerable state when we are half asleep or even when we're dreaming? Although I do think we have a form of protection of when we're dreaming. I'm not sure exactly what type of protection that is. Might be worth a future read. But I do think that half awake state, you know, right before when we're lying down, we're drifting off onto sleep. I feel that's the state we are very vulnerable. And anyone who's watched the movies where they're trying to hijack your dreams and everything, some of those were dissected in my movie reviews. Um, that's pretty much, they're just giving you disclosure of what they already have the technology to do. So one of my watchers had those piercing blue green eyes and it almost seemed like with a flashlight, I kind of just saw this light beam trying to shine through my brain and it came through my laptop screen. So right now I'm pointing at my laptop screen. So my watchers kind of view me through my laptop screen too, but I'm sure they do it in the astral. Um, I had like a night helmet on and white clothes. So that's how one of them looked. I definitely saw two and I felt the other one had more like brunette hair, like it was just a darker coloring to his hair. It was two males though, I do know that. And I almost had like, a, I feel it was like a ponytail. So it's somewhat like a, just an old fashioned style that they used to have back in the day. 
how long have my watchers been around? So this is where it gets interesting. They've not just been around in this lifetime, but they've been on my case. Like I'm just talking about me personally, because I got that insight in regards to me on my case since I would say around the year 1000, what we would consider 1000. Obviously our time has been messed with and everything, but I would say for the, since, since the knights were around, since Avalon kind of ended or like around Avalon, which is like the King Arthur era. So that could have been around the year 800, 900, 1000. I'm not hundred percent sure. Could do a future read on that too, if I really cared about that specifically. I don't think those two watchers have been around for much longer, like 2000 years, 3000 years. Um, now when Atlantis, like that, the, the original Atlantis that we know, even though we are still in Atlantis, obviously, but when Atlantis kind of came crashing down and kept trapping us here over and over again, I don't think they were coming necessarily from that, which I feel that was a few thousand years ago, let's just say two or 3000 years ago, but I felt they were more recent in that sense, although it sounds silly to say a thousand years ago was more recent, but yeah, I felt they were from around the era of when the Templars were around, um, when the entire Knights were around, because they had like that entire attire to them. So they're probably watching me right now, which that's okay. I don't care. Um, they've already done a lot of damage overall, but yeah, so that's with the watchers. So a hundred percent, you do have watchers. They come through your phone screen, your laptop screen, all of these screens, specifically screens, and uh, which is why it's important to put your screen down or maybe cover it with something. If you have like a desktop, just cover it with like a cloth or whatever. The same with mirrors. Mirrors act as portals, okay? There's been a lot of mirror talk on my Patreon lately, a lot of readings on mirrors, whether or not um, entities come through them and whatnot. So it might be worth just a separate video because we, I did, I think we did, because we have like these ask your question videos and I think we did like two or three rounds on that just with mirrors. What I do want to say, a mirror is made of glass, okay? So for people who didn't know that, there's a certain technique on how mirrors are made. If you've ever seen a mirror being made, it, it kind of looks like when you start blowing glass, it's very soft, right? It's almost liquidish. And then when they start blowing it, all of that, it's similar to a mirror. Um, and I only know this because I grew up in an area where the traditional glass blowing technique was kind of shown to tourists that was in Germany. And so my parents would bring me and my siblings there like every other summer. So they would, they would bring us to this one uh, place and we would take a tour. And of course, as a child, you always think it's so boring. And then in hindsight, when you're an adult, you're like, oh, I wish I could relive those days because there was a lot of information you can't find about it online anymore because a lot of these places just kind of shut down, right? And the techniques become forgotten. like. The more technologized we've become, the more those techniques tend to become forgotten because uh, the tech era just took over and then the traditional stuff went out of business. But glass is made uh, similar. So a mirror is just made of glass, basically. And uh, they kind of, it's kind of like they're blowing this things that kind of straight. It's a pretty fascinating technique. I think you can even watch it on YouTube. They're probably different techniques to it, but they're all a bit similar in how it is made. So a mirror can act as a portal. It can let things through. And we might have different video on that. So, so much to the watchers. Okay. Now, should I talk about the gods or the clones? Okay, so the gods, I just wanna reiterate what exactly a god is because I think a lot of people don't really understand that you and I are gods, okay? Um, let me just pull up this one post that I had back on my social media. What is a god? It is worth noting that dog in reverse means god. So there's no coincidence. You know, reverse speech is real. There are reasons why our language is the way it is. There's a meaning to Amazon. There's a meaning to all these companies. Um, you know, I'm sure there's some meaning to Elon Musk and all of that. So there, there's a meaning to our language. Dog in reverse means God. We are all God. A God is a creator of one's reality, nothing else. For people to pray outside of their own reality and worship a false God entity, in religion or other beliefs such as Islam, Judaism, all of that, 
is always so mind blowing to the people who are already past that stage. A God is you, God is us. There is a reason we have been continuously kept down from lifetime to lifetime over eons and eons of years. If you want to crack the script and code the Bible is using, I suggest you replace each time the word God or Lord appears with a God. Okay, so every time they say, and the Lord said, just do it with a God said, and you'll, you'll notice that it's a multitude of different gods that they all mush together into this one over God, which basically doesn't really exist. It's just this false God entity that people are now praying to, right? Like praying, they're being prayed on, like P-R-E-Y, prayed on by this entity that was somehow created by the masses kind of coming up with that, with their own mind. Uh, Jesus, in that sense, was a God and many others. So Jesus is Joshua. The, the name Jesus didn't come about until the medieval ages, but it's the same person. Being a God means being fully responsible for your own actions, for your outcomes, your life, your soul path, your destiny, and everything that goes with it. And that is a hard one for people to swallow sometimes because people like to be in a victim mentality. I see it all over, not just here on YouTube, but all over in your own personal life. Um, they don't want to take responsibility for their life. They'd rather be like, oh, the reason I'm poor and that person's rich is just because of blah, blah, blah. No, I, actually, we all have the potential for things, okay? We might just have to do it in a different way than that other person did it, but we all deserve our abundance, our wealth, and uh, you know, being like the best version of ourselves right now. So it, it takes a lot to be responsible for your own life, your own actions. And it doesn't matter what age you're at. I've seen it at every single age. I've seen it with young kids, teenagers, older people, you know, any, any age at this point. Like uh, it doesn't matter how spiritually advanced you think you are. The victim mentality runs throughout a lot of age groups and uh, soul groups. So um, everything that goes with it. In every moment we are alive, we encounter choices we choose to make and decisions we choose to take. Whether or not we decide for or against it, each moment is part of our own creation in that way, you know? And to me, God is found in everyone who has a soul. This is what it means to be a God. So we are all divinity. If you don't like the word God, use divinity or divine which I'm sure there's a meaning to that too, but um, it's, let's just focus on the word God for now, because God is really triggering to people who are really in that religious trap, I want to say, or who are kind of in like the Jesus being the savior or Jenna, you know, God seems to be a very triggering word for some people. Why exactly? Uh, you know, I have an idea why I think people have just been programmed for so long over eons of years and by society, by their own family, by their own culture. But basically going back to the gods. Okay, so what does it mean to be a god? Um, someone was saying there are AI gods. So they're only AI because the soul is kept elsewhere. They're actually not AI gods. So a lot of these Egyptians or whatever, they're actually not AI. It's just that their soul is kept so much elsewhere that they're so disconnected from their soul and their divine spark that now they seem like they are AI. So not to be confused with AI bots or clones and all of that. Um, okay. And I think we might have to cover the cross in a different video, but basically AI does not create, but AI steals and plagiarizes you know, a copy and paste. And it, it does appear that AI needs a memory card to store all of this on. So AI is basically the soulless beings that were created from Atlantis and on. Call them the clones, call them whatever. Um, the creator powers are within us. Um, why were clones created? I have to go through these notes. They're all over the place at this point. Just pause this. Okay, so these are just random notes. I'm just gonna put them down like they are here. Um, the clones were created to keep the gods company. So the gods 
you know, because there aren't that many souls here, right? Like maybe only three or 4,000 or whatever. Because of ego, the God's ego that they were able to create them. And the creation power, I do think very strongly came about in the Atlantis, you know, which we're still in. But so ego, feeling alone, like a dog, you know, like if you kind of see like a dog is a form of a God, a dog is able to manifest fleas and everything onto them to keep them company so it's similar to gods creating clones to keep the gods company but now they're a plague so similar how you know dogs kind of attract fleas and they want fleas on their body so that they're not alone especially for dogs that are very lonely that are kind of kept in their uh, i don't know, like in a kennel or crate a lot or just don't have a lot of friends the fleas can turn into a plague, right? Everyone who's ever dealt with fleas, we're talking about animal fleas at this point. They're hard to get rid of. And so it's same with the people. They keep replicating. The, co the clones keep birthing babies, etc. They're similar to a plague at this point. You know, the gods who originally, like us, we as gods who created the clones originally, like thousands of years ago, eons of years ago, we didn't think the clones would replicate like that because we maybe we were thinking oh the clones are having this defect they can't give birth or whatever but that was wrong now they're a plague and they're hijacked and plugged into ai so when you see these channels let's just stay with youtube or tiktok or instagram who have like three million followers a lot of that, as we know at this point, is AI bots, it's fake accounts. You know, I personally had like this one person comment on my one post once, they were really triggered by something. I got like 200 comments from different names, but I could tell it was always the same person because they all came at once. It was like a troll army of fake accounts. So similar to that, how this person was able to create these fake accounts within a matter of minutes, you have millions of fake accounts here on YouTube and it happened on YouTube and on TikTok and Instagram everywhere, okay? So 3 million followers, you're probably only seeing like three souls in those followers. They're the channels that have these 3 million followers or whatever. So these channels, let's just say it's musicians like Lana Del Rey or any type of musician or, or like these basketball players, they're sending messages to the gods to wake up. So especially in music, you have a lot of hidden stuff. You know, and I do, I do think a lot of Lana Del Rey's music, I don't really like her that much, but a lot of her music, when you listen to it just from the heart, like completely shutting off judgment or whatever, they're giving you a lot of disclosure in it. Similar to how Michael Jackson was giving a lot of disclosure. Um, so the, the channels are sending messages to the gods to wake up out of this spell we're under. But at the same time, their music, their messages are also hypnotizing other people like the clones. And so when you see, this is the best example I could have come up with. When you see a video, and I saw this one vi music video, this is a few months ago, that has 1 billion views. I saw it, you know, originally I was like, oh, why does this song only have 18 views? So the way YouTube kind of put it, the B and the A almost look the same. And I was like, this is a really good song. Why does it only have 18 views? And why does this guy have like 3 million followers and only 18 views on this two, uh, two year long, uh, two year old video? And then when I clicked on it, I saw it was 1 billion views, but I interpreted it as only 18 souls had watched it. So it only had like 18 real views and the 1 billion didn't even matter which also kind of took me down the rabbit hole that B and eight, there's a connection there. And the eight is a number, the B is a letter, but that they're, they've been messing with our numbers and letters for so long. The eight is the infinity loop, right? So keep looping us back over and over again into here, into their own reality, hypnotizing us, putting us under a spell. So AI cannot create, but creators create. Okay, just something if, if you are wondering who's a clone, who's not, look at the people who plagiarize other people's work. Don't give them credit, obviously, because why would they? And who aren't really creating content on their own. You know, that's usually a sign that they're AI. It's not the only sign. Um, and I do think some of AI is creating something in a form or another, like they're creating like their own homemade soap or their own song or whatever but not really. I feel there's like a little bit more to that story. Um, okay. 
so more in regards to this how many souls are there really there's indian mythology that you need to consider so <laughs> If there are Indians watching this channel, maybe comment below or email me saying, how many gods do you have? Because I feel the number of souls is stuck in your mythology. If it's three or 4,000 real souls, or if it's like the 30,000 real souls, whatever number the Indian mythology is giving you, how many gods there are, and gods is basically souls, right? That's how many there would be, but it's also infiltrated. And here's where it gets interesting. So some of these Indian gods, are one and the same, you know, similar to how Zeus and Jupiter are one and the same. So it's really, really hard to dig through those 30,000 gods that they're giving you in Indian mythology and be like, that's exactly how many souls we have here on this earth. But once you dig through it and the infiltration that happened in that culture too, you would have the amount of souls. So if it is, whether or not it's three to 4,000 real souls, someone asked me that too. Not 100% sure. The numbers keep varying, but I do know it's not the 144,000 that the um, archaic trap puts you under, like the new age and archaic trap puts you under, which I'll discuss in the video after this one. So that in and of itself is another program, right? Um, okay, so here's another interesting one, which we'll put into this video the true meaning of clown world. So clowns being everywhere. Every time I tap into the astral, there are clowns everywhere. And sometimes I see them as these spinning clowns that look like AI gods, which aren't really AI gods, but just gods so removed from their own soul. Um, but I remember when I first started talking about clones and everything, I would have friends, so people who wouldn't even necessarily follow my channel. I would have friends comment on my social media posts being like, clones, do you mean clown? <laughs> and I'm like, that's interesting that some of these clones think clown and clone is the same until I started seeing that a clown and a clone kind of is the same, okay? So that was interesting to me that there is a connection between clones and clowns, that clowns are basically clones. Clowns meaning you have a lot of clowns in the AI, uh, in the astral. So a lot of these AI entities disguise themselves as clowns. What do they look like? I might have to just pick up like a screenshot somewhere that I find online, but basically they kind of look like, like the spinning figure keeps spinning around, like really laughing viciously somehow. Um, they do have the oversized eye of a clown. So whenever they have that, you know, the teardrop and everything around there. So they look a bit different from entity to entity but that's basically what i see there are also accidental clones who then created their own story and own version people saying clones sat clowns instead of clones um and then some of these clones thinking you know they had like a past life here being irish or whatever it could be infiltrated past life memory. It could be that they really were around a few times already. You know, some of these clones have been around for a few thousand years, but overall, it's just never been a really exciting life, I find. Uh, some of them could have been like the kings and queens though, especially like from the past 300 years and on. I think most kings and queens, like the Tudor regime and with the steward regime, all of that from like England, those people would typically be souls, but not all of them. Like uh, Queen Elizabeth I, I think is not a soul. She has like the Nephilim fallen angel energy to me. So it's just so hard to tell. You know, that's how I'm saying. It's just so hard to tell. It's literally like a mind warp and a mind warp and a mind warp. Once you really think about it, which you can't, from a mind perspective, you can't think about these things. You have to feel them with your soul and with your heart to really dig into these things. Um, so then us being trapped here in this reality, thinking we are equal to the clones as gods, that's another pitfall. They don't want us to know that we are the gods. Um, the best, the best moments you won't be able to capture with a the camera, they live on in your memory. So that's just something on camera that I had in regards to that. Are India and Egypt the same? They're similar, but no. The Indian gods and Egyptian pharaohs are a bit different. So I think someone was asking me, I don't know if someone was asking me or if I was asking myself, is there a connection to these Egyptian gods, uh, sorry, Egyptian pharaohs, gods, basically, and Indian gods? 
and the entire thing, whether or not ancient Egypt was in the US instead of in Egypt or whatever. No, I do think it was definitely all there in the Middle East. And um, India and Egypt are similar in a way, for sure, like ancient Egypt. But no, they're not the same. So there's still a difference to it. Atlantis was not a program, but it's been distorted. We all carry different keys out of this reality. Okay. So, and that kind of gets me to location keys. Okay. We're going to leave it at that. We're going to have another video or a few more videos. Um, and I hope this was informative. Let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you're new. Subscribe to my mailing list, leadinghealer.com, link below. Talk to you soon. Bye, guys.